in this service. Amen. Praise God. How many glad to be at Ladies Conference? New Life Church, praise God. On behalf of Brother Sister Stewart, we welcome you all to this first service tonight. Looking forward to hearing uh, the speakers, Sister Keller and Sister Pettigo. We're in for a treat. Can you say amen? amen? And on behalf of the Pentecostal Publishing House, my wife and I are glad to be here facilitating book sales for you good ladies while you're going to be here. And we'll have that display open tonight after service. And uh, we'll stay open as long as you keep coming. And I'll be here in the morning about 8 o'clock. And if you're going to this church, we're going to keep the uh, display open through Sunday night. And uh, so you can buy books Sunday morning and Sunday night as well. And uh, we brought some 14 boxes from Mississippi Ladies Conference last week. And my wife was coming up anyway. So I said, well, I'll just come and facilitate a few sales for you good ladies. We got a lot of good books back there. If we run out of anything that is on display back there, if you order while you're at this conference, there's no shipping costs on anything you have to order while you're at the conference. If we don't have anything back there and you get on the website, you know a book you want to get, we can order it for you. And again, there's no shipping costs, and you should have it within a week to 10 days from this Wednesday. But we do have a new giant print center column reference Bible, new King James versions available we have King James Version, but we sold out of it. We can order it for you, but we do have several copies of the New King James Version, Giant Print, Center Column, Reference Bible is available in the bookstore. Somebody say, praise the Lord. And these are all brand new products I'm bringing to your attention tonight. A Life Altered by Sister Crystal Jones tells a testimony of how God changed her life and how he can change yours as well. A Life Altered by Sister Crystal Jones. Sister Pam Eddings, The Anchors. This is about real stories of your brothers and your sisters of trials and things they go through will build your faith and give you strength, amen, and encouragement to get through the storms in your life. The ain't called anchors when life gets overwhelming. Praise God. Sister Lord Wagner's tremendous woman of God. Brand new book, Through the Waters, amen, the story of Sister Willie Johnson, a tremendous woman evangelist back in the day. She's going to be with the Lord. I read this book. It is tremendous. It will cause you to want to do more for Jesus Christ through the waters, the life story of evangelist Willie Johnson. And then Brother Mangan, Anthony Mangan's brand new book, From Heaven to Earth, story, Prayers of the Tabernacle, amen. Pray in the Tabernacle, Heaven to Earth, brand new book by Brother Anthony Mangan. I choose to win by Brother Brian Kinsey, how to get unstuck on track and enjoy abundant life. I choose to win by Brother Brian Kinsey. And then last but not least, Sister Ellen Lyon, the stressless lamb, conversations between the lamb and the shepherd, slowing down in your prayer time, listening to the voice of the shepherd and drawing close to him. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, ladies. We take all forms of credit card, debit cards, We'll take checks, and I'll even take cash. Well, praise God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise, and let's thank God for what he's going to do tonight. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. I think that's the most anointed book sale I've ever had and heard. So excited to welcome all of you to our second annual ladies conference the first year um, we had like a ladies day so this is kind of like the third year but I am so excited to welcome you here and let's just raise our hands and welcome the one who is here he abides in this place thank you Jesus thank you Lord we worship So the theme of our conference is equipped to shine. Now, I think we've been shining, shining all year. So when we talked about this conference, um, I actually saw it in one of our reflections stories. So 
But you know what? We, all, we automatically shine. When the Holy Ghost comes in our life, there's just something new and different about us. But when we were thinking about in this, um, this conference and talking about being equipped to shine, I found a, a, a couple of scriptures, and of course in Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. But our theme scripture for this theme, for this conference, is Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom, and where does he get that wisdom? He gets that wisdom from above. Gets it from God. He gets wisdom because God will put you in different places. He'll put you in different walks that you'll learn to get wisdom. And you'll pass the test or you'll retake it. But this scripture says, A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. And I believe in this conference and this night and tomorrow and the breaking of the bread and the fellowship I believe that we are going to gain some wisdom and some insight and some understanding. I believe that we're going to be able to walk in a new place and with the Lord. And I believe that you're going to go out of this conference looking at your circumstances in a different way. And you're going to be able to walk faster and move smoothly until the next level. There's always walking, isn't there? So I love all of you. Hallelujah. Brother Jerry, can you put that um, first up there beside me, behind me, all around me? I just want to say something real quick, but I want the verse to remind me what I was going to say. You know what? There's, this is a song about the wisdom of God. This is when you are equipped to shine. Because Sister Adina, sometimes we are afraid, aren't we? Because we don't know what's going to happen in the next week. We don't know. But you know what? We don't know for sure, but we do know one thing. Before me, behind me, and always beside me. And the more that you have walked with God and gained his wisdom, you will understand that he is always with you. He never will leave you. Hallelujah. And whatever the next thing is, you won't be as afraid because you know he will take you through. Hallelujah. 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 Because I have been afraid before. But, you know, the Lord is always beside me, behind me, everywhere. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to be serving a God of power and might and majesty. And he can do all things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are relaxed? Everybody breathe. I have a lot of good friends here. i got a... BFF and a BFF and a BFF and a BFF, all kinds are come out to support me, and I I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate Sister Bennett, our presbyter's wife. You may be seated, but not her, not Sister Bennett. Some of our ladies, they don't understand that we're a part of a bigger thing, and um, we have structure. So Sister Bennett is not only our presbyter's wife, which helps with the government of the church. She's our ladies' leader for our section. And I love her so much because I could not do what she's doing. I just couldn't. So I try to support her and everything that, that she does. So just say a word for the Lord. Thank you for always coming out and supporting us.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, breathe again. All right. So, Sister Sue and Sister Sue O and Sister Sue, what did you say? The other one? Okay. So, Sister Sue O and Sister Sue P, if you have any more tickets, bring them. And we'll have a little fun for a minute while y'all relax and look around and say, oh, people are here. Some people aren't here, but a lot of people are here. Oh, sorry. All right, everybody got your numbers. I like to be on this end, so I'm not just, my heart's not racing. I like this end of the deal. I like giving stuff away. Everybody ready? Nope. Well, if your purse is anything like mine or Sister Keller's, you are not ready. <laughs> oh, she might have some leftovers from the Kentucky meeting. She's wonderful. I've already got to know her and Sister Pettigo, and I'm a little bit relieved. I'm still shaking, girls, but it's not as bad as it was. Just, I'm, it's just me. It, it's me. It's just me. I'm just me. Isn't that true new life? Sometimes. <laughs> All right, everybody relaxed. All right. And probably everybody start with this. 461 50 oh, 461 5062 Ah, oh, Sister Clue. All right. Come on up. You won. Now, Sister Chloe, she's in the back, and she's done a lot of hard work today. So she's got a lot of beautiful clothes back there. All right. So go back there and visit her. uh, Visit the anointed publishing house on this side. And Sister Lynette has skirts in the middle, and Sister Holly Fiora has little girl dresses in the fellowship hall. So we got it all going on for you. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, the doors will be open, and we are going to have uh, Danish and coffee and juice for you all if you want to come early and shop, and we will be doing that up till 10, and the service will be at 1030. And so we uh, want to see all of you back and bring somebody with you tomorrow because it's going to be just as powerful tomorrow as it is tonight. All right, I need Sue O and Sue P to come up here and take the offering pans. And we will take up the offering. And our praise team doing a good job tonight? Amen. Oh, I thought we already prayed enough. Okay. It's just me. It's me. Okay, you can be seated again. The Lord is moving. And I told y'all to relax, but I'm so nervous I forgot to give away another basket. So we'll do that. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and... We're going to do three. I'm going to go ahead and finish for tonight. And Sister Pettigo is going to come and greet you here in a minute. And then we're going to get Sister Keller on the floor. And... So this next number is 461 again, 5089. Ah, Where's house tickets? 
I know, because nobody's speaking. Carissa, you better check your ticket. It's 5089. Anybody else need to check your ticket? No? Not you, Carissa? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Four, six, one, fifty, sixty. <gasps> All right. Sister Sherry. Four six one again. Five one zero four. <gasps> it's my BFF. Come on up here, Sister Smith. God bless her. That is Peggy Ann's basket, and Joyce Ann is going to get it. All right. Okay, so I'll put the one back in there that wasn't happening tonight, but the other three I took out, so there's no double dipping. All right, Sister Pettigo, you want to come and greet us in Jesus' name? Or sing, or whatever you want to do. Thank you, Sister Stewart. She lovely. She's, yeah, no, she's doing such an amazing job. Thank you, Sister Stewart, for having us here. And, and we, I don't want to take too much time because I want to give plenty of time for Sister Keller. And I love her ministry, and I know she's got something that we need to hear today. But I want to thank you for allowing me to be here, and we're excited that we're here with your group. Um, yeah, I came by myself, which is unusual. Usually my husband likes to come with me and and drive me, and he says, I like to carry your suitcases, which, I don't know, he's sweet. And we were talking about how wonderful our husbands were, and I got a good one, and I'm really happy about that, but, you know, uh, he, he loves his GPS, and uh, how many use GPS to, to come here? Did you use it to come here? Oh, because everybody knows where they're going, but you love GPS. Let's do the hands again for that. That was better. Okay, so I got to use the GPS, like I wanted to use the GPS. And how I like to use it is I just plug it in and I let it tell me where I want to go and or where I plugged it in to go. And Tim plugs in his phone. He has his watch going. He has the car going. And usually he has mine going. And I don't know. He has a great, great, great sense of direction. But for some reason, he's having a hard time trusting that GPS. I didn't have any problems except for that one time when I stopped by Starbucks a little bit and it kept redirecting me, turn around, turn around. But it's like, you don't understand. I want to go to Starbucks. I was getting irritated with my GPS because it kept telling me where to go and I wanted to go to Starbucks. But isn't that like our life sometimes? We have the GPS, the Lord, and he's telling us where to go. And sometimes we get off track because, you know, we see the finer things. We see the treats. We see the things that we want and that our flesh wants and the things in, that our heart wants sometimes. But it's not what God has in mind for us. It's not what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to stop off. He's redirecting us. Every time we get lost, he keeps redirecting us. When I see a better way, but you know what, God, I want to go this way. This looks like a better way. He redirects us once again. Turn around. Make a U-turn. He's redirecting. That's not the way I want you to go. But I can get there from here. But that's not the path that I want you to go. That's not the path that I want you to take. And, God, we have to listen to our GPS, don't we? I love this shine. I, this year's theme has been wonderful shine. And the, the word says in Psalms 19, the, Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto my path. And if we hide the word of God in our hearts, if we're always fighting, 
following his directions, if we're listening to God's GPS, no matter what comes our way in life, no matter what we're facing, and you may think there's a better way, God, but God, for some reason, wants you to go through that construction. God, for some reason, needs you to go down this path because we have a destination, don't we? And heaven is my view, and I'm so thankful to be here, and I'm so thankful to God and his GPS, and I'm going to listen to it. Amen. Amen. Are you going to help? All right. Well, we're thrilled to be here, and you'll hear from me tomorrow a little bit, and I'll, I'll sing tomorrow. How's that? All right. Thank you so much. All right. I'm not going to want to miss in the morning service. It's such we're in. We're going to hear from Sister Pettigo. All right. So we're going to get Sister Keller to come on up, and the Lord has spoken to her, I know, and she really, those of us that uh, were able to go to the Kentucky Conference, she really blessed us there, and so did Sister Pettigo, and um, really blessed me with their message, and uh, she's going to bless us again tonight. I think she is going to, are you going to sing tonight? It's whatever you want to do, whatever you feel. Sister Keller, it's just me and just you and the Lord, so do whatever you want to do. What an amazing night this is, and isn't she a great lady? I, I think I got, a while ago, I got tickled because I think when she said to breathe, I think she was talking to herself. <laughs> Just breathe. Just breathe. Been there before, and uh, thank you so much for the invitation uh, to be here and with all of her BFFs, and uh, I have a BFF with me too, Sister Adina Pedigo. Uh, we go way, 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 way back, way back, and... Uh, love her so much and I think this could have really been a presbyter's wife convention because she's a presbyter's wife I'm a presbyter's wife and you're a presbyter's wife and how many more there we go there's four where four are together and agree all things will be done amen <laughs> can I get an amen yeah so us presbyter's wives are probably needing a little breathing at this po a point too um, and so, Sister Shelley Young, so nice to see you. And Ohioan over here in the great state of Kentucky, great to see you. And uh, I was driving over here, much like Sister Adina. It's very rare I'm by myself. I loved every second of it. <laughs> Have you ever just wanted to get in the car before and say, Lord, just where I'm going to fill the tank up with gas and wherever I land, that's where you want me to be. Amen? Yes. Yeah, I might do that and not go home. So if y'all hear that I have disappeared, it's on purpose. Don't call anybody. <laughs> but I came into uh, over across. I come through Cincinnati and then I'm coming over across into your territory. And if I did not, and I have passed that thing a hundred times and it didn't dawn on me until today. It says, Florence, y'all. <laughs> I love that. I'm a Louisiana girl, and I'm all about y'all and fixing and all that kind of stuff. So I just feel right at home tonight because now that's going to mean the world to me every time I pass that thing. Every year on vacation, we pass the Florence y'all. So, And then speaking of y'all, there is May Haw jelly in the building. Have you seen it? That stuff needs to be sold tonight. I've already got two on hold. I'm going to have to eat it quick because I told Sister Dina... Major, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be in our room tonight eating with a spoon. So if you want to join us, you can. But uh, make sure you get some. It is tremendous stuff from the South, the good old South, because I'm a Louisiana girl, and she's a Louisiana girl, and, and uh, nothing better than May Haw Jelly. And that music team, what a great team you have. <laughs> I love it when I see a woman playing the bass guitar. That means revival can happen at any moment. I told them on the way in, I said, I, I've come to the conclusion because we've hosted a lot of conferences at our church. And uh, you can't have a women's conference without men and you can't have a men's conference without women. We're just in this thing together and we help each other. Amen. And thank you to all the BFFs that do help Sister Peggy Stewart. She spoke of you almost all the way here from the hotel, how she couldn't do something like this for everyone without your help. And what a tremendous blessing you are. And how many are can't wait till I shut up so you can go shopping? <laughs> I'm going to be in there with y'all. I told them a while ago, y'all, see, Florence, y'all. 
Well, uh, the, this, the song that the praise team sang, that before me, behind me, beside me, he's never left us. And the minute that we accept him into our life, he will always be there. He will always be there. We're the ones that turn away. God never leaves us. He's always there. I'm going to sing a little song for you before I speak tonight. And I won't hold you late because I know Friday night when ladies are together, it is party time. You're going you're gonna to need Starbucks in the morning to wake up. And so we're going to have a good time tonight. But I'm going to go ahead and sing real quick, He's Been Faithful. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to close your eyes and think of all the times in your life looking back that God has been right there with you. In my moments of fear, through every pain, every tear, there's a God who's been faithful to me. When my strength was all gone, when my heart had no song, still in love, God was faithful to me. Every word Jesus promised, it's true. And what I've thought was so impossible, I've seen my God do. He's been faithful. to me when I look back God's love and mercy it's all I can see yet in my heart I've had some questions I've even failed to believe yet he's been faithful faithful to me oh yes you have lord thank you for being faithful yes when my heart looked away there's been many times i could not pray even then God proved faithful to me. The days I spent so selfishly, I was reaching out for what pleased me. Even then, God was faithful to me. Because every time that I come back to him, my God is waiting with open arms. That's when I see you once again. Aren't you thankful? He's been so faithful faithful to me when I look back God's love and mercy is all I can see yet in my heart I've had some questions I've sometimes failed to believe yet he been faithful, faithful, oh, yet in my heart I've had some questions, I've sometimes failed to believe, yet God's been faithful, faithful, yet in your heart you've had some Questions sometimes failed to believe. 
Yet God was faithful. He's been faithful. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful. I couldn't make it without you, Lord. Thank you for being faithful to me. Thank you, Lord. 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 What an amazing God we serve. I don't know if I would be uh, standing here tonight had it not been for the faithfulness of God. I want to speak to you just for a few moments tonight on the finish line. On Saturday in May, a few years back, I had the privilege of attending a Capital City Half Marathon downtown Columbus, Ohio, to route our daughter Kristen across the finish line after running 13.1 miles. This was the first marathon she'd ever been a part of, and she said it will be her last. <laughs> I'd never been to a marathon before, and I have uh, to admit that I was totally not prepared for all of the emotions and feelings that I would have while watching and waiting for her to come around the last corner as she approached the finish line. I thought I was just in for a relaxing day out, spending time watching our daughter reach a personal goal that she had been training for for the past six months. So my husband and I arrived downtown Columbus about an hour and a half early so we could find parking and we'd be sure not to miss her coming around the last stretch. So my husband stayed on the curb in front of Nationwide Arena so that he could get a picture of her rounding the corner on the last lap. But mom always wants to be near the finish line so I can get a video of the excitement that she has finished the race she had worked so hard to achieve. All the way down Nationwide Boulevard, even from where we parked our car, you could hear people cheering for their friends and relatives and coworkers, and people were clapping and whistling, and it was so encouraging to see people supporting each other. The Columbus Dispatch newspaper said there were several thousand runners participating that day. I noticed there were all kinds of runners participating. There were runners that were pushing participants in wheelchairs, runners that were old, runners that were young. Some looked like athletes, some did not look like athletes. Some were tall, some were short, and there were runners with all different kinds of ethnic backgrounds. And as each runner headed down toward the finish line, I noticed that some were walking, some were sprinting, some were enjoying the experience with a friend, and some seemed to be in a lot of pain. Then when I thought I had the race all analyzed in my mind and I had my emotions in control because I cried most of the time seeing how this experience paralleled with the Christian race that we are all a part of. I'm standing on the bleachers to get a good picture of Kristen as she approached the finish line. And right in front of me, one of the participants, a man in his late 30s, about six foot, four inches, just went down. Hit his head on the concrete and went limp. Medical team came running toward him and tried for several minutes to revive him, but nothing seems to be working. As they placed him in the ambulance, they were still trying to bring life back to his body. He seemed lifeless and all color had left him. Those several minutes seemed like an eternity to me because he was still not responding. But the sad part was that he was less than 50 feet from crossing over the finish line, but never did reach it. And of course, by then, I'm more of an emotional wreck, and I'm praying out loud, didn't realize I was, but I, I apparently was saying Jesus awful loud. And so the woman standing next to me on the bleachers started saying Jesus with me. And we were praying that God would help this gentleman, whoever he was. I thought, God, he's running this race for many worthy causes. American Cancer Society, Ronald McDonald House Charities, Research for patient services and education and the efforts to find a cure for blood cancers, leukemia, lymphoma society, and many others. And above all, he's somebody's son and somebody's husband and possibly a daddy. Please let him live. 
As they were placing him in the ambulance, I'm trying to video Kristen reaching the finish line, but still thinking of how close this man was to the finish line, but never cross it. By then, I was pretty worn out by all the emotions of the day. I began to thank the Lord for speaking to my heart and letting me experience this race. And I am forever changed by what I saw that day. I began to think that our Christian lives are just like this race. We're all at different places in this race called life. But we all have the same goal. Someone said tonight, it's heaven. Every runner that day had the same goal the finish line. They were all working for the same causes that I mentioned earlier. The reason we as Christians must stay in the race is because our cause is greater. Our cause is to make sure that our families, our co-workers, our friends, and the people in our lives, our BFFs, reach heaven. We might not have ever thought that we would find ourselves in the circumstance of life that we are in right now, but one thing is for sure. Our cause is great enough to endure whatever we must endure to make it to the end no matter what. We've got to embrace the race. God has placed you where you are at in this race for a reason. He has placed me in this race where I'm at currently for a reason. You may be running the race. We may be sprinting. We may be walking. We may be in pain. You may need somebody to push you. You may be even contemplating getting out of the race. But no matter where you are at today, let me remind you as the scripture says in Matthew 24, 13, But she that endures to the end will be saved. When I read the word endure, I believe Matthew was saying to us that we will have to go through a few things before we reach the finish line. I looked up the word endure, and this is what I found. Endure means to bear the brunt of, to go through, to hang on to suffer, to tolerate, or to stand to the end. Every person in this room has a testimony of times of endurance. It would be overwhelming to hear how many tests and trials that God has brought each of us through this evening. In my own life, I have had to endure some things, some very hard things, Trials, tests, sickness, pain, and a few situations that I really just didn't have the answers to. But what mattered the most during the tragic time in my, my young life was that every night my brother and I would go to bed, we could hear our mother praying in the living room for her children and her grandchildren to be saved. Her desire was for, for us to finish strong and to finish well. All of the prayers that have ever been prayed for me and my family that have not been answered, I believe are out there in the supernatural somewhere. And whenever God gets ready to let them fall, they will fall. I believe people that have prayed for you and that have helped you to get where you are in life, if those prayers haven't been answered, you trust God. You stay in the race and knowing full well that God is going to bring you through. Whenever God wills, they will come to pass. Tonight, I want to encourage somebody that might be going through a situation with your family, your children, your relative, your spouse, or somebody on the job. That song that Tim Pedigo wrote years ago is one of my all-time, I believe the all-time favorite, probably because I've had to sing it to the top of my lungs before. Keep believing. Keep believing in what you know is true and keep believing in what you know is right because God will see you through. Have you ever gone through things in life where you just didn't know if you believed anymore? And sometimes when I get there, I just walk through my house and all I can say is I believe. 
I believe, I really do believe, God, that you can do this and you can handle this and you can take care of it. But I have to believe from the core of my heart, I believe that God is well able to do anything. But sometimes there are things in our life that seem insurmountable and there's just no way over it. So if all you can do is walk through your home or through your job or through wherever you are at on a daily basis and just throw your hands up and say, I believe, I believe, God, that you can do abundantly above anything that we can ask or think. We must stay in the race. Quitting is not an option. God has kept you. He's brought you here tonight for such a time as this. Some of you are doing well in the race. Others are here today pretending you are doing well. Some of you here tonight are not doing well at all, and you're actually hoping that somebody notices. God does. He sees all things, hears all things, and he knows all things. The Word of God tells us that David had to endure some things, some really big things. David faced a giant who loudly voiced his challenges morning and night. 1 Samuel 17 and 16 in the NLT says, For 40 days, twice a day, morning and evening, the Philistine giant strutted in front of the Israelite army. Your giant does the same. It's your first thought in the morning, and it's your last worry at night. He taunts you with thoughts of defeat. The biggest battlefield is right here, your mind. Your Goliath dominates your day, and he infiltrates your joy. Your Goliath does not carry a sword or a shield. He flaunts blades of loneliness, discouragement, mental abuse, sexual abuse, abandonment, depression, and family trouble right in front of you. Your giant doesn't parade up and down the hills of Elah, the valley where the Israelites were encamped when David killed Goliath. He prances through the hallways of your home. He brings people you can't please, bills you can't pay, prescription drugs you can't resist, and pornography you can't refuse, a career you can't escape, and a past you can't shake, and a future you don't even want to face. So you know tonight, you and I know too well the roar of our own Goliath. You know the exact sound of your Goliath. You see, just like some of us, David was not qualified to go to battle. So Jesse kept David back. All David had was his dreams of victory and what it must be like on the front line and to fight the enemy. But he was too young to go too inexperienced, and too underqualified. So he was given a menial task by his father to take some corn, take some bread and cheese to his brothers on the front lines. When he got there and heard the roar of Goliath defying God, he asked the same question some of us are here tonight asking. Is there not a cause? David was left to believe that he was left out, underqualified, and weakened by the opinion of others. But David never lost his question, is there not a cause? When you have a vision of what can be in your family instead of what is, and when you have faith of what can be instead of what is, God can and will open the door To your victory. Even when King Saul belittled David by putting his armor on him and saying, You don't qualify. You're too small for this battle. You don't measure up. David simply shared with Saul victories from his past. Uh, There's a dead lion and a bear up in the mountains that I killed, and there is soon to be a dead Goliath on this mountain. When Goliath mocked David, 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47 says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. 
This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut your head off. Maybe that's how we need to walk through the house. I'll strike you down and cut your head off. It's not your husband or your children. It's the enemy that has trying to come against you. And you, you can even do the mm, 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 mm. Maybe that's what you just need to say. Just mm, 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 mm. Make them wonder. What's wrong with her? The revival coming to the land. Don't be making fun of that. Verse 46, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut your head off. I love that. This very day I will give you the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword, or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. The battle is the Lord's. Ladies, we've got to learn to pick our battles. A subplot appears in this story. It's more than David versus Goliath. It's God focus versus giant focus. David could see what others didn't see. And he refused to see what others did see. The people majored in Goliath, but David <coughs> measured, majored in God. He saw the giant, but he saw more of his God. Look carefully at David's battle cry. Thank you so much. Look carefully at David's battle cry. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Note the plural noun, armies of Israel. Armies? The common observer sees only one army of Israel, not David. He sees the allies on D-Day, platoons of angels and infantries of saints, the weapons of the wind and the forces of the earth. God could pellet the enemy with hell as he did for Moses. He could collapse the wall as he did for Joshua. He could stir thunder as he did for Samuel. David knew what God was capable of. That's why David saw armies of God. And because he did, David hurries and runs toward the army to meet the big old blustery Philistine Goliath. David's brothers covered their eyes both in fear and embarrassment, and Saul knows he's racing to his death. Goliath throws his head back and begins to laugh, and when he did, his helmet shifted just enough to expose his forehead. David spots the target and seizes the moment. The stone torpedoes through the air and into Goliath's skull, and he crumbles to the ground and dies. So the question is tonight, when was the last time you did what David did? How long has it been since you ran toward your giant? How long has it been since you've walked through the hallways of your home claiming your family for the cause of Christ? How long has it been since you have pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ over your children, your spouse, or your lack of a spouse, and your home? How long has it been since you've had a vision of what your family could be? How long has it even been since you have claimed victory for yourself? Is there not a cause? Yes, there's a cause. There's a God and there is a victory waiting just for you. It's obvious we did not gather tonight to bring each other corn, bread, and cheese to your sisters serving on the front line of the battle. But some of you have come tonight with a question, and I have been sent to help you with the answer. You may be asking, why stay in the race? Is there not a cause? Yes, there's a cause. You are just five smooth stones away from bringing down your biggest giant. You are just five smooth stones from seeing your family walk in victory. 
Goliath's still roaming our world. Just listen to the news every day. Debt, disaster, drugs, danger, deceit, disease, depression, suicide. But you cannot let your giant dominate your life. We need to pick up the five stones like David did and make five important decisions. The first stone David picked up represented the stone of the past. David remembered that God had given him strength to wrestle a bear, a lion, and a and strong arm a bear. His second stone was the stone of prayer. Before going high, David went low. Before ascending to fight, David descended to prepare in prayer. Don't face your giants without first getting on your knees. Dedicate time to prayer. The Apostle Paul wrote, prayer is essential in this ongoing thing called warfare. Pray hard, pray long, pray until something happens. God will give us and keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind on him. The third stone was a stone of priority. David saw his Goliath as his chance to let God be God. David didn't even know if he would exit the battle of alive, but he was willing to give his life for the reputation that his God was indeed able to deliver him. The fourth stone was the stone of passion. David didn't run from his giant. He ran toward him. He was able to bring the giant down because he emphasized his God. David was passionate, uh, passionate about knowing his God was well able. The fifth stone was the stone of persistence. David didn't think one rock would do it, so he took five. He knew that Goliath had very four, four very large relatives. For all David knew, they may come running over the hill to defend themselves. So David was ready to empty the chamber if that is what it took. So we must imitate David. We must never, ever, ever, ever give up. There might be more enemies coming over the hill. One prayer might not be enough. One apology might not do it. One day or month of resolving an issue with someone in your family might not work. We may get knocked down a time or two, but we must never quit. We must keep loading the rocks. We must keep swinging the sling. We must have the faith to endure to the end no matter what. Tonight, I believe it is time to remember my past and just how far God has brought me. It's time to reactivate the prayers I've prayed, people have prayed for me, and the prayers, and decide that I am not going to allow anything. Nothing shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God. It's time to get God back to being the top priority. I want God to receive all the glory for the things he's done in my life. It's time to be passionately fighting the giants in my life for the things I'd like to see God do in my life and the lives of my children, my husband, my family, my church. We must be persistent. The minute we let up, a giant could be right around the corner to make us fall. Whatever it takes for me and my family to be saved, that's what I've got to be willing to do. If it means I need to pray more, I'll pray more. If it means I need to read my Bible more, I'll read it more. If, it, if I find the need to, for forgiveness in my heart towards someone in my life, I'll forgive. No matter what it takes, I want everybody in my family and that I'm close to to make it across the finish line. Would you stand with me this evening? The musicians and singers want to come. I'm going to read to you 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, let's think about those things. 
everything tonight in my family might not just be as it should be or in my own life, but I'm going to keep on marching. I will keep believing in what I know to be true, what's right, what's noble, what's admirable. If anything is good or praiseworthy in my life, I'm going to think on those things. No matter what the devil brings against me, I'm going to let him know the scripture we all know. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And if we truly believe, see, we got sometimes we just leave, we, we lose our belief system. Do we really believe God is able? Do we really believe God can fix our problems in our life? Do we really believe God can help us to forgive somebody? Do we really believe he can make those changes? Or is it just easier just to navigate through life and not cause any ripples and not have any changes in my life? And it's just the same old, same old, same. That's why people get out of the race because it doesn't really make a difference in their life. So be careful that your belief system hasn't been tampered with because we've got to believe that God is well able to help us cross the finish line. Amen. Amen. Thank you for letting me share my heart tonight. And as we pray, I want, I want, if everybody will, I want you to come forward. And here's why we're coming forward. Whatever it is in your life that you want God to help you with, that keeps you from running the race with patience and keeps you from maybe, well, is this all just really worth it anymore? Is there not a cause? There's a cause. It's eternity. And so it's not an option to just, well, I, I'm not sure this is all really worth it. I want to remind you tonight, you are worth it. You are worth whatever it takes to cross the finish line. There's somebody that needs you in their life. That helps us to square our shoulders, breathe, believe. Because if somebody's watching me, I don't have a right to. To allow them to fail because I didn't get it right. So we're going to come to the altar for all of the above. And just rededicate our lives one more time. That God, there are, that's why the Bible says sometimes just stand. Some of you may find it hard to put one foot in front of the other to get to the altar tonight. But once you get here, I do believe that God's going to give you strength for what you're going to face when you leave this ladies conference. You can put one foot in front of the other and say, God, I'm going to believe in you. I want my belief system to be turned back on and knowing that you are full and well able. So if you don't feel that you can, grab a hand of a friend and say, come on, girl. Come on, BFF. I'm going to take you with me. We're going to go up and make sure that we have everything right with God because that's where your strength's going to come from and God's going to help you through. Let's meet in the altar. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, for these wonderful ladies. God, we're coming forward tonight as a pledge to you, God, that we can't do this by ourselves, God. We've got to have you, Lord. We've got to have your strength and your wisdom, God, to fight this fight of faith, God, and to see that our families, God, and our co-workers and our children, God, and our spouses, God, and our friends, God, make heaven their home, God. Don't let me be the reason, God, that someone doesn't live for you, Jesus. Help me to get things right with you, God. Strengthen me, God, because I want to stay in the race, God. There are people that depend on me, God. There's people that depend on me, God, to live for you, God, to give them hope in their life and to give them strength in their life, God. Bless every lady that's in this building tonight, God. Encourage them, God. Anoint them, God, and strengthen them, God, tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands and cry out to God. God, I need you, Lord. I'm desperate for you, God. I love you, God, and I can't run this.
this race without your strength, God, without your wisdom, God, without your mercy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let healing waters flow tonight in this place, God, as we gain strength, God, to do what you've called us to do, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, we're in this race together, God. And when it's weak, God, the other one is strong, God. Help us to be there for each other, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is a cause, God. We must be saved, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's just give him a, a love offering as we wave to him. Hallelujah, Lord. Help us to prepare our hearts and ask again. Some of those petitions, some of those dreams, Lord, they may have fallen by the wayside. Oh, revive them in us again, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, forgive us of our unbelief and let us prepare our hearts once again, Lord, and ask you one more time. For the desire of our heart. Hallelujah. During tonight, when you're praying or you wake up in the morning, you're praying, uh, please pray for Sister Adina's mother. We all know her as Sister Mooney. And she has um, a tremendous story of living for God. Um, some of Sister Holly and I went to a, a minister's wife's conference, and she told her story there. You were there at that time years ago. But it's never left me what she endured. And yet God brought her in and gave her a wonderful life, a wonderful family. But she, uh, they have found cancer in her lung. And she's going to go through a serious operation. So it's like this. The Lord is with us, in front of us, behind us, and all around us. But we would pray, and I want you to pray that God would heal her. That he would remove that those spots. She's walked with the Lord for a long time. And if not, then we pray that God will take her through. Because we, you know, it's what God, we just have to walk with the way, with the GPS. But let's just continue to pray for her and believe for her. She has to have that surgery on the day, Tuesday, the first day of general conference. So y'all all be aware of that. And a lot of y'all will be heading that way. So we'll have Indianapolis will be full of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, heal my sister in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch Sister Mooney, Lord. Take your hand of healing, God, and move it over her body, Lord Jesus. We love her. And, Lord, you love her, Jesus. Oh, Lord, keep the family, Lord, under your wing, God, during this time. Help Brother Mooney, God, as he walks through this. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. So in the morning, the doors will be open at 8. We'll have breakfast for you. We're going to have time of shopping now. If some of you out-of-town guests need to know where to go eat, come and see me. Um, I have a place prepared for you if you want to go. And um, all you sisters that have looked around and our sisters are MIA, get on the phone, get on Facebook and blow it up and tell them what they missed. But they have another opportunity to get here tomorrow. All right? All right. God bless you and you be dismissed to go fellowship and take this with you in Jesus' name.